So one of the things I hate in life is troubleshooting wireless issues. I know, I know, wireless audio file. So I should like a wireless stuff, but I only like wireless stuff when it's working. So recently the Sonos 14.6.1 and the 14.6.2 kind of introduced some wireless issues to the Sonos network. Are you affected? I was kind of affected. So stay on if you want to find out what I went through. So my issue with the Sonos 14.6.2 update and the 14.6.1 update was that it broke some of the connectivity with my Sonos devices. And I have about 20 Sonos devices on my network. So you've got to trust that I try to get them all working fine at any one point in time. But with the 14.6.1 update, it broke the connection to my Symphonix bookshelf speakers. I tried to troubleshoot them. I even went to the extent of replacing one of my Unify access points. So uh, this is an access point that I've been using at my house and it has served me well for the last five years or so. This is a Unify APAC long range. So it's supposed to provide very powerful 2.4 gigahertz signal throughout the house, which the Sonos network kind of needs. Now, a lot of Sonos devices now, they will be able to support 5 GHz network, but the most stable and the longest range will be 2.4 GHz. And because the Symphonix bookshelf speakers started breaking up and the sound started distorting and the songs wouldn't play, I tried to troubleshoot my network thinking that it was the network issue. Well, kind of, well, I, I do have pretty respectable network speed scores, but network speed is not the same as network stability and not the same as latency. So when I went through the whole route of replacing the access point, I didn't really solve the problem. So what did I solve? Now, summary up front, before I go on to my long, long video, I will tell you a couple of things first. So if you don't have time to stay around, listen to this couple of pointers, go and try it out, see whether it sorts out your problem. If it doesn't, come back to the video, see what I've done. If it does, then great for you. Okay, so cut to it, upfront summary. First. Try to connect one of your Sonos device to a wired LAN. When you do that, the Sonos device will be able to create its own Sonos Net, which is its own proprietary wireless network. And all your Sonos devices subsequent to that will be able to connect to that network without having to jam up your entire Wi-Fi network, especially if your Wi-Fi network is not a strong one to begin with. The second involves a purchase, which is buying the Sonos Boost. The Sonos Boost actually does the same as um, connecting one of your Sonos device to the network and it will create that Sonos net. But that is helpful only if your device, if your current Sonos speakers aren't near a router where you can run the cable. If you can run the cable to one of your Sonos speakers, then it effectively does the same as what the Sonos Boost does and you don't have to spend the $99 or the $129 depending on where you get it. The third solution I have for you to try is that if you are using an iPhone or an iOS device, just bear in mind that sometimes it is not the connectivity of your Sonos device that is facing the problem, but rather the S2 app that is running on your phone is unable to catch on to the Wi-Fi network and therefore unable to connect to your Sonos devices. Now, if that's the case, just be very mindful, go to your settings and try to turn off Wi-Fi Assist. So what Wi-Fi Assist does is that it tries to cut over to your 4G or your 5G, your cellular network when the Wi-Fi is not strong. And when that happens, your Sonos speakers that are on your Wi-Fi network, they aren't able to communicate with your S2 app running on your iOS device or your iPad OS devices. And the fourth and last suggestion I have for you is to turn off unused networks that are running in your Sonos S2 app. Now, if you know how to do that, try these four tips and see whether it solves your problem. If it does, fantastic. If not, and if you have time to stay around anyway, let me go through each of these in detail. So the first positive step that I spoke about was to connect one of your devices to a wired port in your router. Now, what that does is that it will then create its own Sonos net network, which is a 2.4 gigahertz or whatever proprietary network that Sonos uses. And when I first did that, it was connected to my Sonos Beam. But with the 14.6 update, 14.6.1 update, it kind of broke it. For some reason, the Symphonix bookshelf speakers, which were at a pretty distance to the Sonos Beam, which is in another part of the house, 
near my Wi-Fi router, it actually kind of broke. And I suspect that it broke because of the distance. So when I brought the Symphonic Spookshelf speakers nearer to the beam, it actually worked. So what I did was I disconnected the beam from this wire point near my router and I ran another cable and this time round I connected my Sonos Arc. And the Sonos Arc is actually located at a more central place in my whole apartment. And when I did that, all the connectivity issues were resolved. So that was exactly what did it for me. So my suggestion and the reason why I put it as the first pointer is for you to try that first, okay? Find a Sonos device that you have that is in a relatively central part of your house. Plug the LAN cable in, shut all your Sonos devices down, turn on the one that is connected to that LAN port first. Okay, after a minute or two, then start powering on the rest of your Sonos devices. With that, it should solve your problem if it is a problem with the Sonos speaker's connectivity. Now, the second piece of advice I have for you was for you to buy a Sonos Boost device. Now, let's assume that your router is in a DB box or in a, some part of your house where you normally wouldn't place a speaker, right? So that device is actually a very small device. I don't have it here because I don't use it. Um, it, it should fit nicely into tight spaces, so you don't have to dedicate a speaker to put it there. But the thing I think about is that the IKEA Symphonic speaker is $99, the Sonos Boost is $99. If they are the same price, and by plugging in the LAN cable to the Sonos Symphonic bookshelf speakers, you are able to create its own Sonos NAC, even if you're not going to be playing any songs in your DB box. I guess it's okay. Your, you know, your electrical riser probably doesn't need music, but it's the same price. So the Sonos Boost might not be the best buy, but it does offer a very neat solution. And with the Sonos Boost, it is able to cast out the Sonos Net. Just make sure that that's the first device that's turned on, then start turning on the rest of your Sonos devices, and you should be able to get a rock solid connection. But you have to ensure that the iPhone or the iPad that you are connecting to the network, uh, running the S2 app is connected to the same network as the Boost is plugged into. So basically same router, same Wi-Fi network, and it should be able to work pretty well. There are ways around it, but I won't go into the technicalities today. So the third thing I'm going to recommend to you that you try to solve any of this issue is the um, turning off the Wi-Fi Assist on your iPhone or your iPad, whichever one you're using. Now, Wi-Fi Assist is actually a very smart idea, right? In a way, you know, on your phone or on your iPad, if you do not have um, good enough coverage in parts of your house where you can't get Wi-Fi strong, the phone will detect that and it will then fail over to your 4G or your 5G cellular connection and it starts using data from there. Uh, not exactly the best idea if you are limited on cellular data, but that is what uh, a feature that iOS and PadOS devices um, offer so that you are able to stay connected even if you are momentarily out of range of your Wi-Fi. Say, for example, you are in the toilet and the toilet is in a far place in your house and you can't get the Wi-Fi, it fails over. But when that happens, you are then not connected to the Wi-Fi and Sonos are Wi-Fi speakers. And when the Wi-Fi speakers, they may still be working, they may still be connected, but if your phone is not connected to the Wi-Fi and is using 4G, 5G data, then you won't be able to see those speakers. So your speakers might actually be okay. So before you go around trying to sort out your Wi-Fi issue, maybe just turn that off. I have already listed some of the steps here, but more importantly, just go into settings, go into mobile data and scroll down, find the Wi-Fi assist and turn that off, right? I I think it should have been a turn off by default, but I, if I remember correctly, um, Apple actually ships its devices with that Wi-Fi Assist turned on. So you've not tried that and you're still having problems trying to communicate using your S2 app to your Sonos devices, maybe that's the first thing that you should try then. And the last pointer I have for you is actually to remove any additional networks. Now, if you've been using Sonos for quite a while and you have moved from different Wi-Fi 
Wi-Fi uh, setup in your house, meaning to say your Wi-Fi network could be a little bit newer, you could still have some of the older networks still being configured in your S2 app, right? So your Sonos devices actually has a memory of the previous network that you were on. Now, I don't actually know whether it's smart enough to ignore it completely or it might actually still sometimes try out that network. So for security and for safety reason, I would recommend that you go into your Sonos app. Um, I'm actually highlighting the steps right here. Go into the Sonos app, go inside settings and disable the Wi-Fi networks that you're no longer using. So I have the P2359 here. I have a Raven network. Don't ask me why I name it such. Just um, remove the Wi-Fi that you are no longer using. So in my particular case, I'm no longer using the Raven network. So I removed that completely. And with that removed, I hope that that Sonos device or your Sonos network is not going to get confused and try to latch onto that network, which is no longer existing. Or maybe it is still turned on in your router and your router is capable of running multi-network. Then maybe you should turn that off so that you won't get the situation where your Sonos S2 app is running on one network, trying to find a Sonos device on that network, but it actually can't and because your Sonos devices are on the other network. So turn off the one that you're not using. So that should help you eliminate the issue of having the S2 app not able to see your Sonos devices on another network, even though both are actually still connected well. So assuming that your network is properly set up, I think these four pointers should be able to help you sort out most of your network issues if it's not sorted out, it could then be due to any other problems. Just remember that Sonos devices can get a little bit particular about the network that they're on. So if you're running like, for example, wireless repeater, Sonos is not actually supposed to be able to support those wireless repeaters. I have actually in my Unify network turned off mesh networking as well. So all APs are on their own and they will hand over uh, usually pretty well. It's just that I don't depend on my Wi-Fi network for switching uh, and for routing and for connecting my Sonos devices now. I just use my tip number one, which is to plug a cable into the most central Sonos device, Sonos speaker that you have in the house, plug that in first and everything else is then falling onto the Sonos Net network. So I really hope that helps you. And if it doesn't, then maybe you have to really start thinking about changing a router. But if you're going to be changing a router anyway, then and spending the money, then I would maybe suggest that give the Sonos Boost a try. It's a $99 solution. And for most intents and purposes, that should really solve that problem. It's just that I would prefer that you don't spend additional money without having tried other options and other solutions first. Okay, so if any of my tips help you solve your problem, I hope you appreciate it. And you can show your appreciation by scanning this QR code, following through to my Patreon account and sending some coffee money my way. It helps to keep the channel running and it is not cheap to keep this this channel running and my time, the amount of time I spend on this is actually quite taxing on me holding a regular job and trying to do this at the same time and trying to bring value to you, my viewers. Um, I have recently turned on super tanks. I don't really like to ask for this, but if you do appreciate this video and if it has helped you in one way or another, you could send a contribution directly on YouTube using the super tanks logo. Otherwise, subscribe to the video, leave a comment, leave a like on the video, and even by watching some of the ads that run in line in my videos, they actually help me generate some revenue to keep this channel going. So, all right, I will see you in my next video where I could possibly be reviewing the Sonos Ray. So, if you're interested, do stay tuned. I'll see you.